Good morning everyone! I'm Katrina Mariano Marindug of BES IT2ABTO and now I am going to discuss what data communication is. Data communication is the exchange of information between two devices such as computer to computer, phone to phone, via some form of transmission medium. That transmission medium meaning that is the path or the bridge or it is also a channel. Channel uses a medium or it is used as a tool for them to transmit signal, transmit data from transmitter, from receiver, via internet, printed, printed products such as books, newspapers, via television, radio, telephone, and also face-to-face. -face. That's why, um, in order for you to survive, you need to communicate. Because communication is very important because it also facilitates building relationship among people. And it is also a tool with which we um, exercise our influence on others, bring out changes in our and others' attitudes, so motivate people around us, and to establish and maintain a good and effective communication with them. So data communication is also a give and take of data. Giving means I give information to you and to other people, then you will receive it. After that, you will do responses and give your opinions and I will receive that too. So give and take of data. So we have here the five characteristics of effective communication. First, it uses the same transmission medium and language. Pwedeng salita, pwedeng pasign language, and pareho sila ng language. Pareho silang Ilocano, Ibanag, Tagalog, and nagkakaintindihan sila. Second one is direct and indirect communication. In, sa direct kasi, um, it is real-time. Aside from face-to-face, -face, yung gamit natin ngayon na um, Google Meet. So, di ba, um, para din siyang face-to-face -face kasi there is a response. Kung nagtatanong si si prof, syempre sasagutin ng students na yon, di ba? And then sa indirect naman is, meron siyang bridge or mer merong tool na gamit or a medium. And via email, via sa Yahoo, so ito naman is dinadaan sa sulat. Then third one is yung mutual understanding. Ito kasi is based on our interpretation ito, di ba? So, hindi tayo pare-pareho ng interpretation sa, sa mga bagay or sa mga sitwasyon. For example, sabi ng ate mo sa'yo, ah, sige, matulog ka lang, lumabas ka lang, makipag-party-party ka, ako nagagawa sa lahat, na, sa lahat sa gawaing bahay, ako na magluluto, ako na maghuhugas, and then ang ginawa mo naman, lumabas ka nga. Di ba, lumabas ka nga, nakipag-party-party ka, hindi mo alam na yung way ng pananalita ng ate mo is may, may kasama ng pagpaparinig, di ba? So, hindi kayo pareho ng interpretation. And then, pang-apat is yung um, continuous process, yes. Because communication is continuous. As long as there are people, there is communication. And then, fifth is use of words as well as symbols. Dito naman sa words is, syempre, yung mga radio broadcasters, di ba? Mga naririnig natin sa radio, nakikita natin sa mga um, TV. Yan yung mga um, mas gamit yung mga words kaysa sa symbols. Ang symbols kasi is mga gestures yan, mga action mo, ganon. And yun nga, aside from Mr. Bean, yung example niya, another is clown. Di ba sa mga birthday party, nakikita natin yung mga clown, di ba? And minsan lang nila... Uh, minsan lang sila magsalita kapag may ipapagawa, ganyan. So, ituturo sa'yo. Pero, ang pinakagamit talaga nila is yung actions, yung gestures nila, gamit yung mga material na ang pinapakita sa mga bata. So, in data communication, aside from the devices, the transmission medium, ayan, it also involves our actions, interpretations, presence, understanding, and opinions. Okay, data. When we say data, it refers to an information presented in whatever form is agreed upon by the parties creating and using the data. So, there is a communication because there is a data to be communicated, right? So, in presenting a data, there are different forms. Maybe in the form of text, numbers, audio, video, and images. There are three fundamental characteristics of data communication. We have the delivery, accuracy, and timeliness. Delivery, the system must deliver the data to a correct destination. Dapat alam mo, dapat kabisado mo kung kanino mo talaga itatransmit yung data na ginawa mo. For example, yung message na dapat sa boyfriend mo is send is na isend mo sa papa mo. So, mahirap yan. That is an example of a wrong destination of data. Second one is accuracy. The system must deliver data accurately. Dapat maayos, maiintindihan, and it should be clear. 
Okay? For example, nag-chat yung classmate mo, tinanong niya kung anong oras yung event sa school nyo. Ngayon, nag-reply ka ng 7pm. So, there's a delivery kasi nga nag-reply ka. Pero, mali yung accuracy mo. Sa halip na 7am ang sabihin mo, is 7pm ang nasabi mo. ba? Diba? And then, third one is yung timeliness. So, the system must deliver the data in a timely manner. For example, nag-chat ka sa best friend mo. Sabi mo, best, punta ako dyan, no, tayo sa Netflix, and bibili ako ng mga pang food trip natin. Ngayon, tinago mo na yung cellphone mo, hindi mo na tinignan kung nasend ba or hindi. Ngayon, pumunta ka na sa supermarket, bumili ka ng kung ano, after nyan, pumunta ka na sa bahay nila. Tapos, tinatawag mo na yung pangalan niya. Lumabas yung kasambahay nila, and sabi niya, kaalis lang. Ngayon, tinignan mo yung phone mo. Kasi hindi mo tinignan kanina kung naisend ba or hindi. Ngayon, nung, nung tinignan mo na yung phone mo, is hindi pa pala nagsisend yung uh, message mo. So, nakabilog pa lang siya, wala pa siyang check. Meaning, ni delivered wala pa rin. So, you need to be aware. ba diba? You need to be aware kung, kung nasin man lang ba niya, kung nakita niya ba, or nag-reply siya. So, you need to be aware. Okay, so you need to consider these three for characterizing data communication. Here are the components. We have the message, the sender, receiver, medium, and protocol. So, we have the message. Message is the data or the information to be communicated. Siya yung pinag-uusapan, siya yung topic, siya yung tinatransmit, and siya rin yung nare-receive. Sender. Sender is the device that sends the data message. Sa kanya galing yung tinatransmit niyang data sa mga receiver niya. For example, the NDRRMC. So, nag-message siya sa maraming tao and nag-warning siya about sa bagyo. So, siya yung information source kasi sa kanya galing yung mga message na yun. Then, receiver. It is a device that receives the message. So, we are the receiver kasi sa amin, sa amin yung data na yun and kami yung nakabasa dun sa message, dun sa warning about sa bagyo. And then, the medium. So, it is physically the path by which a message travel from sender to receiver. So, ito yung ginamit niya or it is a tool for to it is a tool for transmitting the data to the receiver. So, via phone, sa text messages, via radio, via television, like that. And then we have here the protocol. Protocol is a set of rules that governs data communication. So, trans for transmitting the data to the receiver, so they use the internet, Wi-Fi and others. Data representation. So, nasabi ko na to kanina sa una sa my data. By presenting a data, there are different forms na makikita nyo. Diba? Maybe in the form of text, in the form of images, um, numbers, audio, video. Pwedeng magkakasama sila. Pwedeng video and audio lang. Pwedeng with numbers or as a whole na yan. So, under text, we have the ASCII code. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. So, every letters have a respective numbers. Even the uppercase and lower cases, they have also their respective numbers. Okay? Second one is the EASCII. EASCII stands for Extended American Standard Code for Information Interchange. By holding ALT key, and typing a corresponding four-digit ASCII code. And then we have the Unicode. Unicode stands for Universal Character Encoding Standard that assigns um, a code to every character and symbol in every language in the world. And then the ISO. ISO is the number of users um, who use computer network located over the world. So to ensure national and worldwide data communication, ISO develop or OSI for Open System Interconnection. So, there is the OSI model. Data flow. Data flow means how the data transfer between devices. So, we have the simplex, half duplex, and full duplex. Simplex, a communication is unidirectional, means one way only. For example, a radio or TV station. So, they can send signals from their audience but never receive signals coming from them. So, para ka namang baliw kung salita ka ng salita, ginajudge mo kung ano yung sinasabi dun sa pinapanood mo, pero hindi ka naman nila naririnig. Another one is reviewing CCTV or CCTV monitoring. Diba? So, they can send signals para mapanood natin yung record ng CCTV. Diba? Kasi may mga CCTV with audio yan or pwedeng um, with video lang. Okay? So, yun yung uh, sa CCTV. Never silang nakaka-receive ng signal sa atin. Napapanood lang natin sila. And then, the half duplex. Half duplex, each station can both transmit and receive but not at the same time. For example, si station 1 and station 2. Station 1, 
wants to send data to a station 2. So, station 2 will receive that. But, it cannot send back at the same time. For example, nga nun is yung walkie-talkie. Diba? For example, is the walkie-talkie. The time na prines mo yung button dun, and nagsasalita ka na, ire-record niya yun. Pero, hindi pa maririnig ni station 2. Kasi nga, hindi ka pa tapos. Nagre-record ka pa lang. Sasabihin mo pa lang mga gusto mong sabihin sa kanya. The moment na ni-release mo yung delivery mo doon sa button na yun, doon pa lang mare-receive ni Station 2. Gets? So, patatapusin ka muna niya bago niya yun ma-receive at magkaroon siya ng response. Another example is yung lectured video. O, di ba yung iba nating prof is binibideo mo na yung sarili nila. Di ba? So, um, nire-ready mo na yung mga topic na kailangan. So, nire-record nila yung sarili nila. The moment na in-upload nila yun and uploaded successfully na and nakita na natin, yun na yung time na um, pwede na natin siyang mapanood and pwede na tayo magbigay ng response sa kanya. Ganun yung half duplex. And then, third one is the full duplex. So, both station can transmit and receive data simultaneously. Okay? So, two devices are connected to each other and they can both send and receive data at the same time. For example, is yung mga telephone and mobile phone calls. Kasi, pwede na sila magpalitan ng data. Habang nagsasalita yung isa, pwedeng mag-response yung isa. So, yun yung data flow. Next is the network criteria. When we say network, it is consists of two or more computers that are linked or that are connected in order to share resources. So, it is a set of device. And that device such as computer, printer that are linked together through cables, lines, and etc. So, the performance can be measured in many ways. The performance of network is many process. Transit time. Transit time is the amount of time required for a message to travel from one device to another. It is like the source to a destination. The time that is fully transferred the message is called the transit time. For example, sending a file, sending one file to a user to another via email, Yahoo, Skype, or any other medium. It shows the time to send. For example, 30 minutes. That 30 minutes is what they call as a transit time. So, it also based on your internet connection. Kung mahina, kung mabagal, you know. And then, we have the response time. So, it is the elapsed time between an inquiry and a response. Okay? So, for example, a user requests something to a network. Okay? So, the elapsed time that the network responds to the user re user's request, that is called the response time. Okay? The performance of the network depends on many factors such as the number of users, type of transmission medium, capabilities of hardware, efficiency of software. Syempre, kung maraming gumagamit or maraming device ang nakakonek sa isang network, may possibility talaga yan na mag-slow down. So, itong apat na to is ito yung mga pupwedeng makaapekto sa paghina or paglakas ng network mo. So, it is all about the performance of the network. Next is reliability. Measured by the frequency of the failure, the time it takes a link to recover from failure, and a network's robustness in a catastrophe. So, it's all about overcoming failure in a network. So, when you say reliability kasi, it is the probability of the system, network, or a service that performs in its intended function without failure. The third is the security. So, how the network protect data from unauthorized access. Diba sa mga applications, sa mga websites na nakikita natin, meron siyang agreed of terms na chinecheck natin. May mga permission about sa atin na gagamit. So, it is closely related to authentication because when we say authentication, it is all about the user's permission when accessing the service or other applications. Diba? For example, ng unauthorized access is... Um, if one person wants to hold your account, username, kunwari sa bank account mo, pero yung gamit niyang account, gusto niyang i-hold yun, di ba? Pero yung gamit niyang account, hindi sa kanya. Gagawa at gagawa yun ng paraan para may ma-access siya sa'yo. So that is an example of an authorized access. So paano nga ba, paano mapoprotektahan ni network yung data mo from all other unauthorized access? So it is with the use of the network security. Diba? To reduce the risk of falling victim of data sabotage and to protect and ensure that your data, that a shared data, is kept secure. So, yun yun. It is with the importance of the network security. Categories of networks. So, we have the size, ownership, distance it covers, and physical architecture. 
size means the range. So, how far is the network covered? Hanggang saan yung sakop ng connection of your network? Diba? Yung connectivity ng network mo. Kung hanggang saan ba in one building or in one campus. And then, ownership. Ownership, we have the public and private network. Private network that is owned by a single company or organization. And then, public network that is owned by a common carrier. For example, mga phone company and other companies. Okay? Distance it covers. Ito naman is distansya. So, kung ilang mga kilometro, ganyan. So, how far is your network capable of? Maybe 11 kilometers away, 10 kilometers away, or 30 miles. So, distansya naman ang pinag-uusapan dito. And then, physical architecture. Physical architecture, the way the network devices and services are structured to serve the connectivity of the devices. Network devices are typically includes mga routers, switches, and hub. So, dito naman, ito yung ginagawa gamit mong network at the same time, yun yung nakaayos for the needs of the connectivity of your devices or computers. Categories of network. So, under the categories, we have the LAN, MAN, and WAN. LAN stands for Local Area Network. It is privately owned. So, in local areas such as buildings and home or campus, LAN provides a useful sharing of information such as printers and scanners. LAN is where two or more computers or laptops connected to router via the Ethernet cable. Ethernet cable such as um, straight through or crossover or wirelessly Wi-Fi or wireless LAN via wirelessly Wi-Fi or wireless LAN. So we have the category of LAN. The size is um, buildings or campus. Then the ownership is privately owned. Distance few kilometers away. And then physical architecture is the bus star and drink. Bus star and drink is, I explain ko yan pero medyo sa last part na siya. And then example is laboratory network. Next is the metropolitan area network or MAN which is similar to LAN. Okay, so but the area is a large city. So city naman, city naman na to that exceeds 30 to 40 kilometers or 20 to 25 miles. So multiple land connects to man. That's why we can say that um, man is larger than land. Man also has a faster communication because the backbone of man have a high speed fiber optic cables. So I have the category of man, then the size is city. And then, the ownership is public company. And then, distance is um, extend over the entire city. And then, the physical architecture is land to land. And then, example is the cable network. Then, the last category of network is the one or the wide area network that covers the wide area. So, it spans the whole country. One ensures that a user in one location can communicate to other location. One exceeds 30 miles away. Okay, so in um, by establishing ano, by establishing a LAN, so it uses hub to connect two or more LANs within a city. It can be, it is with the help of the routers or bridges. They can communicate, it is with the help of routers or bridges. And then in one, two or more LANs within a country can communicate to each other. For example, one local area network is in the Philippines and the other is in Singapore. So I can say that I can communicate to a person in Singapore, ask something to him or her, it is with the help of the wide, wide area network. Pero kung man kasi ang ginamit mo dyan, in city lang siya. Gets? So we have the category of one and then the size is um, globe na siya. And then the ownership is public or private. And then the distance extend over the entire globe. Physical architecture is man-to-man. -man. And then the example is the internet. These are the three categories of network which is LAN, MAN, and WAN. Network is a group of communication devices such as computers and printers. It is also a collection of interconnected devices via communication channels. Channels such as mga cables na ginagamit natin that facilitates communication. Also, sharing of information and resources 
among interconnected devices. So, sharing of information and resources such as mga computers nga, mga printers, ganyan. 1960s, standalone devices. Standalone devices are self-contained. So, does not require any functions to, any computer to functions. And don't fa function sila without any other help of other computers or devices. For example, is the fax machine. Fax machine is like a printer. Diba? Kunwari is, ano siya, a kind of telephone kasi yun. So, based to dun sa pinanood ko sa YouTube. So, it is a kind of telephone. So, may dial pad, meron siyang telephone, tapos may mga buttons dyan. Ngayon, sa taas niya, para siyang printer kasi pwede kang mag-print. Ngayon, mag, um, dadial ka ng recipient's number. Ibig sabihin, yun yung number of receiver kung kanino mo pagsesendan. And then, meron kang ilalagay na bond paper dun sa taas na yun yung ipiprint mo, which is yun yung gusto mong sabihin dun sa receiver. Ngayon, si receiver, kung gusto niyang i-print yun or lagyan ng copy, para may copy din siya, is pwede. Pwede niya ulit yun i-print, pero a Xerox type na siya. Black and white. So, nakaka-amaze lang siya. So, yung fax machine na yun is hindi niya kailangan ng any devices or computer para mag-print siya. Another example is the Instax camera. Alam niyo naman po siguro yun kasi latest siya. So, yun yung Polaroid or a Fujifilm camera which is isang click mo lang lalabas na yung picture mo. So, hindi niya kailangan ng any other computers para mag-print yung um, picture mo. Okay, so mid 1960s is uh, mid 1960s is standalone devices yun. Okay, so ARPA stands for Advanced Research Project Agency of U.S. Department of Defense had funded some researchers. Okay, so the researchers need to share their information. Ibig sabihin na kapag laan sila ng pondo for some researchers, which is ang dapat gawin ng mga researchers is to share their information with them. I-share nila yung mga natutuklasan nila. Ngayon, si ARPA is decided to have such an infrastructure, so to build up siya, that could provide facility, that could provide um, provide facility to exchange information by reducing costs. So, year 1967, itong ARPA na to is, hindi sila nakontento, nakontento for some researchers. Nagkaroon na sila ng meeting, so talagang pinush na nila yung um, project nila. So, nagkaroon sila ng meeting for the Association of Computing Machinery and present yung idea which is ARPANET. ARPANET is a small network of um, connected computers. A small network of connected computers. So, yung ARPANET idea na yun, each host computer would be attached to a specialized computer called Interface Message Processor. Each INP had to be able to communicate with each other INPs as well as with its own attached host. So, ngayon, when we say INP kasi, it is um it was used a packet switching node used to interconnect participants network to the ARPANET. It is also the first generation of gateways which is also known today as router. So ito naman yung mga computers or some um computers or participants via the IMP to form a network. So para magka-connect connect sila um everyone to connect each other each other's computers or devices. So ginamit nila yung IMP via the IMP in the form of network. So to connect with the ARPANET. ARPANET is a small network kasi yan, di ba? For the for connected computers. So they used is they used it as as a tool for them to communicate with each other. So in year 1969, so the ARPANET was established. So na implement agad si ARPANET with a four nodes. University of California, Los Angeles at Los Angeles, University of California at Santa Barbara, and then Stanford Research Institute, and then the University of Utah. Okay, so they are connected with each other via the IMPs to form a network. So, a software called the Network Control Protocol or the NCP that siya naman yung nagpo-provide ng communication between the host. Okay, so in year 1972, Year 1972, Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn interneting the project Transmission Control Protocol. Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn have a strong collaboration um, in the history of computer science. So they are also known as the father of internet, designed the backbone of our connected planet, the method that computers allows to communicate. So Cerf is the programmer in UCLA. And then Scan naman, 
a communications expert and electrical engineer from Princeton centered in the field of computer networking in 1970s. So, itong dalawang to na father of internet is kumbaga hindi sila na kontento sa process of data which is mabagal. Mabagal yung process of data, lalo na kapag mga long messages na yan, so mas babagal pa yan. That's why, um, nag-isip sila agad. So, um, yung mga ARPANET computers daw ay slow. That's why SURF and CAN improve the system, hoping to realize network that could send long messages quickly and reliably. SURF and CAN impose a set of rules or protocols on senders and recipients. SURF and CAN called the rules TCP-IP, Transmission Control Protocol or Internet Protocol to communicate quickly and reliably. So, yun lang naman yung pinaka-main point nila para makapag-communicate tayo ng maayos. Diba? Makapag-communicate tayo ng mabilis at maayos. So, that's why the internet was born. Dito na nagkaroon ng internet. TCP IP is so very successful and very efficient. So, 40 years later, it's still empowering the internet until now. Diba? Ina-empower pa rin natin yung use of internet. So, until now, text-only electronic messages, ngayon to email attachments na. Okay? So, we can communicate from one location to other locations, from one country to another country. Diba? And we can watch movies in a, a, in a high resolution. O, diba? So, under this, we have the encapsulation. So, data encapsulation. Data is broken up into segments with transport layer headers. Those segments are each put into packets with network layer headers. Then the, pa then the packets put into frames with data link layer headers. The frames are then turned into bits, encoded, and sent across the network. Okay, so we have here the model of TCP here. We have the application layer. Um, under encapsulation to. Okay, so we have the application layer, transport layer, the internet layer, the network access layer. So, application layer, send data across the network. The send that data, for example, is um, I want to make a history of my life. So, gagawa ko ng data, di ba? So, ayan, typing, typing. So, to send that data, the data broken up into many segments. So, kunwari, gusto kong ipa-edit yun for um, editors. So, the data will divide. So, magbabroken up into many segments siya under the transport layer. Okay, of course, your source, destination, the port numbers, and then the transport headers. Then, that segment is put into a packet at the internet layer with source and destination. So, how do we get that network? Paano nga ba namin makukuha yung network na yun? So, it's because of the IP address information of that people. Okay? Then, that packet put into frames at the network access layer with source, destination, and then how many pages? Ito naman yung air tracking light. Yung sinend ko is 100 pages. So, dapat kapag sinend sa akin yun is 100 pages pa rin. Okay? And then, Ito naman yung destination is also the MAC address, yung MAC address ng tao. So, from then, the frame is converted into bits and encoded and used across the networks. Okay? The network as ones and zeros. So, yun yung um, model or yun yung process for sending and receiving the data na ginawa mo. Then, next is the datagram. Datagram provides a connectionless communication service. UDP or the User Datagram Protocol forgets that it has actually sent any data or a stateless protocol because UDP protocol do not remember a specification of recipient's process that is like the port number and then the IP address after it has sent the data. So, sa sending side kasi, forgets the recipient specification after sending the data. Ngayon, si UDP kasi is after sending to her the data. Wala na siyang um, kumbaga wala na siyang pakialam kung sino yung nag-send, what is the IP address, so basta na sa kanya na yung data. If UDP protocol receives a data from the application, the UDP protocol do not bother to check whether the recipient process is aligned or not. Basta na-receive niya na yung data, so wala na siyang pakialam dun sa um, proseso nung recipient, di ba? Wala na siyang, wala na siyang pakialam yung mga information nung 
um, nagbigay, yun yung datagram. Then, the functions of gateway. Kaya siya sinabing, ano, dun sa data, datagram, kaya siya sinabing connectionless. Kasi after na sinag sa kanya yung data, is okay na sa kanya yun. So, wala na siyang pakialam, wala na siyang connection dun sa nagbigay, dun sa recipient's, um, recipient's specification. Okay, then, we have the functions of gateway. Gateway is the network node that connects two networks using different protocols together and between two different networks, okay? So, ito naman is, kunwari, si server nasa taas, tapos meron siyang central device dito na switch. Then, we have two computers here, or three na lang. Ngayon, si server wants to send data from PC1, okay? And PC2 wants to send data from PC3. So, kumbaga, traversing lang yan. It is with the help of switch sa gitna. Yung switch na yon is siya yung gateway. Yung switch na yun is siya yung gateway that enables traffic to flow in and out of the network. Kasi when you when you send is dun muna siya dadaan. Diba? Dun muna siya dadaan sa gitna. So, yan yung pinaka-main gate mo to transmit data to other computers. Shortly thereafter, TCP to TCP have a higher level functions. Under this, we have the segmentation, reassembly, and error detection. Under segmentation, um, it is a process of dividing a large data into smaller pieces to, to be transferred easily. So, dito is, for example, um, in a group, meron kayong kanya-kanyang kanya-kanyang chapters. Uh, kun kunwari is research. So, sa isang, ano, sa isang member ng group is chapter 1, the other is chapter 2, chapter 3. So, ngayon, um, kailangan mong i-divide yan from chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. So, you have 3 files para um, hindi siya ganun kabigat and mas mabilis na i-transfer to your other um, to other member. Kasi i-review nyo yung lahat. Yun yung tinatawag na segmentation. Ibig sabihin, segment by segment. So, you have the chapter 1, the other file is chapter 2, the other file is chapter 3. And mas mabilis yun na i-transfer. Mas mabilis yung proseso. To the destination host, for example, to the leader nyo na, upon receiving all the files, it joins them back to reproduce the original file. For example, yung mga hinati-hati mo, segment by segment, aayusin ni leader para mag-form siya na isang research paper. And meron ka yung original copy nun. Get? So, yun yung reassembly. Kung baga parang pinagwatak-watak mo and then pinagsama-sama mo rin. Okay? And then, the error detection. Um, from the word detection, to detect if there is something wrong to the network, um, if there is something happened to the network, if something is corrupted, lost, or missing. So, there is the checksum, acknowledgement, and retransmission to prevent that. Okay? To control the error. There is a checksum used to check for a corrupted segment. So, from sa corrupted mga ano naman to, corrupted segment. So, siya yung nag-handle doon. Acknowledgement naman to confirm the receipt of data segments. And then, the retransmission, it is also the heart of the error control mechanism. When a segment is corrupted, so dito naman dito siya nag-handle, dito, dito naman yung, um, kumbaga, um, work niya. Okay? So, tinitignan niya if um, yung segment is corrupted ba, lost, or delayed. So, it is retransmission. Okay? Then, IP is the internet protocols. Dito naman is siya yung nag-handle for some datagrams. TCP IP, Transmission Control Protocol or Internet Protocol is the internet protocols today. So, yun yung ginagamit natin ngayon. Doon tayo mas comfortable when it comes to communication and do other activities with the use of devices. Physical topology. Physical topology refers to the way in which a network is laid out physically. Physical topology describes the way computer connects with the help of cables. Under topology, meron kasi tayong dalawang types, which is the physical and logical. Physical topology connects computer with the help of cables, and the other is logical. It is all about the data flow. Connects computer um, in the form of a data flow. Okay, so under this, we have the mesh, bus, star, and dream. Mesh is a communication is point-to-point. -point. Okay, so we have here the advantages, which is a point-to-point -point link, robust. When we say robust kasi is, can be one that doesn't break easily and cope up with errors. So, mabilis silang makakope up with errors and nakakagawa agad sila ng solution. And privacy or security. 
Ang disadvantage niya naman is expensive in cable and input-output connection and sheer bulk of wiring. And then, meron din tayong feature which is N-1 connection. So, i-explain ko yan mamaya. Kung baga, ang N-1 is formula. Okay? So, mesh topology, each computer on the network is connected to every other computer on the network. Okay? So, more connections, that's why they also handle failures. So, each device has a point-to-point -point link for each device in the network. Therefore, uh, makikita natin dito yung number of device, yung links per device, and the under links meron tayong simplex and duplex, and then yung total of the input-output ports. Ngayon, sabi niya nga dito, meron, um, each device has a point-to-point -point link. So, nakaganyan siya. Okay? So, each device is nakaganyan. Kunwari, apat yung device mo. So, ganito rin yung point-to-point -point link niya. Okay? So, for example, you have four device. Okay? So, N mo is four. So, how to, um, how to know the links per device naman? Okay? Madali lang yung formula ng N minus 1, which is 4. Minus 1 is equals to 3. So, that is the links per device. Under links, meron tayong simplex and duplex. Simplex is, ang formula, formula nyo naman is N is of N minus 1. So, 4 is of 4 minus 1. So, 4 minus 1 is 3. Multiply it by 4, yung nasa labas. So, equals to 12. So, that is the simplex links. Well, ang duplex links naman is pareho din sila ng formula ng simplex, pero dadagdagan mo lang siya ng divide by 2. So, divide by 2 ito. So, 4 is of 4 minus 1 divided by 2. So, 4 minus 1 is 3. Divide, um, multiply it by 4, 12. And divide it by 2. So, is equals to 6. So, 6 is the duplex links. And then, the total um, total of the input-output port is N minus 1 ulit yung formula. Which is 4 minus 1 is equals to 3. So, each link is meron silang for sending and then the receiving. The sender and then the receiver. So, yun yung sa mesh. Next is the bus. Bus signals are shared with the backbone cable. So, bus topology, computers connect to a shared central cable. So, yun yung back, backbone na sinasabi which is called the bus. So, meron siyang advantage na less expensive than mesh and ease of installation kasi less cable din ang gamit dito. Then, ang disadvantage niya is difficult reconnection difficult to add station, and then limited number of station. And yun nga ang feature niya is the backbone cable. So, yeah, explain ko yan. In the bus topology, um, it is all about the backbone. So, dun sila nakakonect lahat. For example, you have four computers. And then, here, you have the backbone cable or a central cable, which is called the bus. So, you have taps and then connect connectors. Yung taps at saka connectors na yun or cables is yun yung mga nakakonect from your computer to that central device. So, for example, if one computer wants to send a file to this um, computer, um, the two computers above will also receive that too. Kasi isa lang kayo ng pinagkoconnectahan eh. Diba? Yung central cable lang na yun. But, magagawa mo yun, makikita mo yung target device only with the help of the MAC address. Ibig sabihin, um, itong si central cable or the backbone cable will read that MAC address and then ipupunta niya dun, ipupunta niya yun dun sa respective device only. So, dun lang siya kasi dun yung MAC address na um, sinend mo dun sa file na yun, dun yung MAC address na nakalagay. That's why dun lang siya sa device na yun, dito sa device na to, because of the MAC address. Diba? And then others will reject that. Siya lang yung mag-aalaw kasi nga sa kanya yung MAC address na yun. Gets? So yun yung sa bus topology. And bakit siya sinabing difficult reconnection tapos difficult to add station and limited number na? Kasi nga, for all that computers, nakakonect sila in one cable, that central cable. And if that central cable fails, all networks will paralyze. Diba? Another example is, for example, andito si printer sa taas. Tapos, syempre, yung central cable and then you have two pieces. Ngayon, if one computer wants to send a file for that um, for that printer, kailangan mag-wait ng isang computer. Pero, kapag ang ginawa niya is nag-send din siya ng file at the same time, yung time din na nag-send yung isa, magkakaroon na ng collision, magko-collapse na yan. Diba? O how much more pa kapag napakarami ng nakakonect na computers in one central device only? Siyempre, mag slow na yung connection. Diba? Mag-i-slow na yun. Kaya, kaya siya sinabing limited number lang ang kailangan. 
So that is under the bus. Next is star. Star signals are passing through the central device. So meron siyang advantage na point-to-point -point link, robust din siya, and less expensive than mesh. Yun nga lang, ang disadvantage niya is using a central device and ang feature niya is a hub. So, star topology uses a central device which is a hub or a switch. So, either dun sa dalawa yung central device niya with a point-to-point -point communication link. Point-to-point -point communication link, there is a dedicated link or cable between the devices. So, ibig sabihin, for, um, um, for example, meron kang central device here and then meron kang three computers, si PC1, 2, and PC3. Ngayon, yung central device na yon, that is um, having a dedicated link which is yun yung cable na naka-attach from computer to the central device for every PC or, or every computer. Ngayon, that central device, either a broadcast or unicast. Broadcast, that is under a hub and then sa unicast, under switch naman siya. For example, if one computer wants to send a file in PC1, wants to send a file in PC2 using a central device which is hub, ngayon, yung file na isasend ni PC1 kay PC2 ay eh, mababasa din ni PC3. Ngayon, kung ang ginamit mong central device is switch, PC1 send a file in PC2 with a central device of switch. Ngayon, magra-route yun dun sa central device and um, mababasa niya yung MAC address. With the help of MAC address, dun lang mapupunta sa respective PC or yung target device only lang, which is kay PC2. So, yun yung gamit ng hub and then the switch. Okay? And then, under, ano, under kay Star Topology kasi, it is based on the central device na gamit mo. And makukuha mo lang yung target device mo with the help of the MAC address. And then, last one is the ring. Ring signals are circulates within the network. So, meron siyang advantage na point-to-point -point link to both side only. Then, meron siyang easy to install and configure. So, easy to troubleshoot naman ito. So, at this ad disadvantage niya is unidirectional traffic of signal and then ang feature is repeater kasi paikot-ikot lang din naman yun. Ang ring topology is a type of configuration where each computer is connected to each other. So, it is a shape of um, a closed loop or ring. Diba? Paikot-ikot lang siya. So, each data packet send around the ring. So, yung data na yun is paikot-ikot siya until na ma-reach niya yung destination niya. And every computer device has a neighbor to um, for communication purposes. So, meron siyang kumbaga mas malapit na computer sa kanya. So, it is also very old. Very old na rin itong um, ring topology na to as well as the bus. Kaya, it is very rarely to use na. So, they are easily to install and troubleshoot. But the disadvantage is if one computer breaks down, di ba naka, ano yan, nakapabilog yan, di ba? So, connect-connect of cables yan. So, if one computer breaks down, it will affect all the computers, all the performance of the networks. Unlike sa ibang, unlike sa ibang category of topology na meron silang kanya-kanyang cable. So, kahit na mag-breakdown yung isang computer, um, mag-continue pa rin yung um, sending of files. So, these are the categories under the physical topology. We have the mesh topology, we have the bus topology, star topology, and ring topology.